What's up guys, welcome to video 3 of the how to make a VR game series. I hope you are enjoying this series so far. If you do, please consider supporting us by leaving a like or subscribing to the channel. Also, you can find all the source code from our videos on our GitHub which you can access anytime by subscribing to our Patreon. Last week, we looked at setting up our VR environment and place cubes as our hand prefabs. This time I'm going to show you how to create realistic looking hands, animate them and control these animations with a script. You can see that I cleaned up the scene from last time. If you would like to use this floor material, feel free to download the Unity package in the description. The first thing we are going to do is to import our hand models. You can find the Unity package in the description as well. Just drag the package into your Unity. And then you can see an import Unity package window opening up. We can see that we have left hand and right hand animations. We have a material for our hands. We have the models themselves and we already made some prefabs. Just click on import to import all these assets. All right, let's take a look at our prefabs. If we open it, we can see that we only have a model and no animations and no scripts. Let's attach the prefabs to our hands. For this we just open the hands like before and where we put the cube we can now put the real hands. Also let's remove the line renderers because we don't want to see any lines when we move our hands. And the same thing on the other hand. Great, we are now ready to test it. Let's press play and see how this looks. Alright, we can see our hands and they fit pretty nicely. Cool. If the hands don't have the right scale, rotation or position for you, you can just go onto the prefab and adjust it here. We put our hands 90 degrees to the side and a little bit to the back and for me this fits perfectly. Now our hands look a little bit weird without animations but let's fix that now. What we have to do is add an animator to our hand and then we are going to create a controller for our left and our right hand. You can just go back to your hands folder, to the animations and then save your controller right here. Now go back to your prefabs and then assign the controller. Make sure that you choose the avatar here. We have a left hand and a right hand avatar. Great, let's go on to the controller. To edit our controller we can just right click on it. Now a window that is named animator will open. We are going to create now a blend tree. It is used to blend between similar animations and is commonly used in games to blend between walking and running. Blend trees uh, basically allow for a more smooth and realistic blending of multiple animations. Let's get back to Unity and get started. First we will add two parameters. These two parameters are our two animations. The first one is the grip and the second one is the trigger. Both of them are going to be floats. This will allow us to constantly get the input of our controllers and increase the float steadily to get a more smooth animation. After adding the parameters we can start creating the blend tree. Just right click here, create state and from new blend tree. We double click to open the blend tree. The first thing we're going to do is press on the blend tree and change this from 1D to 2D freeform Cartesian. After that you will be able to choose both parameters, our grip and our trigger. Then we are going to add four motions. We need some idle motion, we need a grip, we need a trigger and we need a motion for when we press both buttons. Now let's add our animations. First we're going to choose the idle animation. 
Then we have a pinch, a fist for grabbing, and a fist for the case that we press both buttons at the same time. Lastly, we have to give the animations a position in our blend tree. We see that we have now a position for every animation and if we pull our model inside of here we can see if we increase the float of the grip we will trigger the pinch animation if we increase the float of the trigger we will trigger the fist animation maybe let's change the position of the pinch and the fist Perfect. Now we're ready to go. We are just going to do the exact same thing for the left hand. Alright guys, great. We are now ready to create our script. We need this script to set the float values of our parameters, which in turn blend our animations. We need a reference to our input actions that trigger each animation and the animator itself. I'm going to show you two different ways of triggering the animations. The first one will be a smooth animation and the second one will be a snap animation. I think most of you are going to use the smooth animation, so let's create that first. We're going to our hands folder and then create a scripts folder. Let's create a new c -sharp script. I'm gonna call it smooth hand animation and open it in our code editor. I'm using Rider as my code editor, but if you want to change your code editor, just go back to Unity, go to preferences, and under external tools, you will find the external script editor. You can just adjust your script editor right here. First, we have to import our input system. For this we are going to write using unity engine dot input system. We don't need this. And let's create a new serialized field and get a reference to our animator. Let's make two more fields and this will be our input action references for our hands. We'll have the trigger action reference and we'll have our grip action reference. Next we will need update loop. In this update we will get the float value every frame. So let's create a local floats for the trigger value. Get the value from our action read the value here and our value is going to be a float then we get a reference to our hand animator and we set the float that we set as a parameter to the value of our trigger let's do the same for the grip just copy that we have the grip value We change this one to grip. Let's quickly fix our naming. And then let's talk about performance. Unfortunately, strings like grip and trigger are not really performant. We want to replace them with so-called hashes. We just declare two new private fields. And for the trigger animation and the same thing for the grip we can then now use these two hashes and replace them for our strings great all right let's fix this one and then we're done 
So guys, we have a smooth animation now and why shouldn't we stop here? Well, if you want a really performant game, you are likely not going to use update loops because update loops cost a lot of performance. So I'm going to show you one way you can do it without updates. However, this animation is not going to be smooth, but we're gonna have a snappy animation. If you have to decide between a nice animation and performance, maybe this is a good option for you. Let's go back to Unity and create a new script. I'm gonna call it snap hand animation and open it again. Firstly, we're gonna add the three same serialized fields as before. We're not going to use update this time, so we can delete this. Then you see we need input system. We're gonna add this one again. Perfect. And let's add this to the same namespace. Great. We are going to use an event-based architecture here, which means we are going to subscribe and unsubscribe to events which are only called if something happens. For example, if we press the trigger, an event is called for this trigger. If you work with events, you have to make sure that you subscribe to them on the onEnable method and you unsubscribe to them on the onDisable method. Otherwise, it can lead to memory leaks. Memory leaks in Unity can happen if something like an event is still active even though we don't need it anymore. Or like in this case, if the hand would be disabled, we wouldn't want the events to still be active since they use up our memory. Here we will use hashes again like before, so let's just copy them from the other script. Now we will create events for when the action is triggered and for when the action is cancelled. So let's subscribe to our events here. First for the trigger action. We're going to create an event for when the action is performed and also one for when it is cancelled. You will see that this is red, but don't worry. For our actions we have to create callback methods. In Rider we can just press Alt and Enter and create a method. Now we have a call callback context for our trigger action performed. We will look into this in a second. Now we can do the same for the grip action. Now that we have created all the events, don't forget to unsubscribe to the events as well. Therefore we just copy all the events, put it into the onDisable method and place a minus instead of a plus. Now you might ask yourself what the hell are callback methods? Well basically these methods are called whenever the event is triggered. For example if we cancel the grip action this method is called. So let's set the float of our animator here in these methods. For grip action cancelled, we're going to get the animator and set the float to the grip animation and we set it to zero because it has been cancelled. Then we are going to copy this line to the grip action performed and put here a one. Same thing we're going to do for the trigger, we get the hand animator, we set the float to the trigger animation and for the cancelled we're going to put a zero here which means the animation is not triggered and a one here which means the animation is fully triggered. Great, we're now finished with both scripts. I give you one more tip. You can make these methods much more nicer by using a lambda expression. We're using a lambda expression, just type equal and then the arrow. You can do this for every method, since we are only using one command. Alright, and this looks already much nicer. Great! Let's now go back to Unity and attach these scripts to our hand. Go to our hand prefabs and we're gonna look for both our scripts. Get a reference to our animator 
First, let's set up our smooth animation. We disable the snap hand animation and we're going to add our input action references. If you're not sure which references to use, you can always search for XRI and open our input action map. Here, what we want is the select value and the activate value for our smooth movement and the select and activate for our snap movement. We need a value so we can increase and decrease our float and we just need to select because we just want a button, basically a boolean true and false to know when to activate and deactivate the animation. So let's do that right now. We are here at the smooth hand animation and we are going to select the activate value for our right hand. And for the grip we select the select value for the right hand. And as I said, we could just going to use activate here and select here. And the same for the other side. Put your headset on your head and press on play. We're gonna see if we can move our hands smoothly now. And you can see we have a really smooth animation. Great! Let's quickly test the same thing for our snap animation. For this just enable the snap hand animation and disable the smooth hand animation. And then let's quickly test it. Alright, and this seems to be working too. Cool! Alright guys, we're pretty much at the end of this video. But what if we want to create our own custom animations? Well, that's easy. Just drag your prefab into the scene view. And then we open the animation window. Let's go to window. Animation and animation window. We paste the animation window here. And we can see that we have a timeline here. This is our current animation. We can just press here and create a new clip. Give it a name. For example, we want to show an index finger on the right side. So we go to hands, animations and save it on the right hand. And then to start our animation, we just tap on the record button. Go to the end with our timeline and set the hand to the position it should be at the end. So we start animating our hand now. This will take some time, so grab a coffee and start animating. Once you're happy with your animation, you can stop it and then review it. Looks pretty good. Now, as I said, this may take some time and you have to do it for both hands. But now, for demonstration purposes, let's see how it looks on the right hand. We go to our right hand and open our hand controller. In our blend tree, we replace the pinch with the new index finger animation. Let's go to our animation and uncheck this checkbox right here. Let's play again and now it should work just fine. Alright guys, we can see our animation looks perfect. We can delete the prefab from our scene and then we're finished. And that's it guys, that's all for today. In the next video we are finally going to look into how to grab objects directly with our new hands and we prepared a fun little demo for you guys. If you find this type of content helpful please consider subscribing to our channel and leaving us a like. Like always if you would like to get the full source code you can get it anytime on our Patreon. If you have any questions feel free to join our Discord where we happily answer any questions. Thanks for watching and see you next time.